Okay, this is part of the channel where I go through a past exam question. This one is to do with differential calculus and involves trigonometric functions. It's worth eight marks, should be able to do this in eight minutes or less. <laughs> Are you serious? Now, I do think it has a, a certainly a tricky element towards the end. So let's see how we go. Take a picture, try it yourself, and then we'll go through the solutions. Okay? Start the clock. A curve is given by the equation y is equal to the following. Find the values for x for which all points on the curve where the derivative is equal to zero. So in other words, find where the gradient is equal to zero on this curve. Right. Um, okay, so we have y is equal to cosine 2 pi, which is just a constant, times by cosine x again, right? So when we differentiate this with respect to x, we'll get y prime. Now the derivative of cosine is minus sine 2 pi. Now this stays the same. Remember, this is part of chain rule. This stays the same, but now we must multiply through by the derivative of the bracket. Now the derivative of the bracket will actually be 2 pi derivative of uh, cosine is minus sine x, okay, uh, and the times by the derivative of this thing here, but that's just one, right? So I'm just going to put it down just so you don't forget that that's what you need to do in case it wasn't just x on its own. Okay, so we have this expression that's tidied up. We have uh, y prime is equal to negative 2 pi sine 2 pi, that's cos x, okay, times by sine x, right, and they're asking us in the question, when that expression is equal to zero, right, so when the gradient is equal to zero, so I've got to equate this whole thing to zero, now, um, that is zero, okay? So what needs to equal zero? Well, either this thing that I've just underlined in white is zero, or this thing is zero. The, the minus two pi can never be zero. That's just a constant. So in other words, we need uh, the following things to happen. We need this thing to equal zero. So that is the question. When is this equal to zero? And when is this equal to zero? So what I'll do, I'll do this in two stages. Let's do, um, let's do this one first, okay? Because this is actually rel uh, a little bit easier. When is sine x equal to zero? Well, if we think of the unit circle, right? Remember, vertical is the sine and horizontal is the cos. Um, when it is sine equal to zero. So we start here, okay, and we need to rotate. Now, so therefore then one of the results will be zero, right? Zero degrees. Now we're working in radians, so we should work in radians, but it's still zero. Zero is still zero. And when is sine zero again? Well, it's over here where I've just put this cross. So we would need to rotate all the way around, and that would just be pi. So I have two answers here, right? I have zero and pi. Now what I'll do is I'll just collate my answers on the left here for now, 0 pi are two of the results. Um, okay, so let's go over to this part here now, which I will circle in this uh, little cloud. So when is this value equal to 0? Right, so we need sine 2 pi times cos x to equal 0. Okay, that is what we need. So this is one of the solutions. So again, we need the center of this thing here to equal either zero or pi, right? Because if the center here, what I've just sort of underlined, if that is equal to zero or that is equal to pi, that means sine of that value will equal zero. So we have to unpack that a little bit further. Like, when is that thing that I've underlined in purple, when is, when is that equal to zero or pi? So when is basically 2 pi times cos x, when is that equal to pi, right, or zero? Well, um, when we have it equal to zero, uh, when is 2 pi times cos x, when is that equal to zero? Okay, I can divide both sides by two pi, so when is cos x equal to zero? Right, uh, if we look back over at the unit circle, I'll just use this 
when is cos x equal to zero? Well, that is at the, where the laser pointer is. This is zero degrees, but the but cos is one here, right? So that's not correct. We want cos is equal to zero, so we have to rotate to here. Now that is a ninety degree rotation. So we are going to stop there because cos is zero here. If we continue going all the way around to where cos is zero again, we have gone past the domain in the question. So if you remember, the domain was what values are between zero and pi, right? So that means then that one of the results, well, the only result for this is when uh, pi over two is one of the answers there. So I told you on the left here, I'm collating my answers. So pi over two. Right, so we've got three answers. Now let's go ahead and try and solve when is 2 pi cos x. So if we scroll down here, we want to know when 2 pi cos x is equal to pi. Now I realized here that actually we can go clockwise to get to pi, but we could also go anti-clockwise to get to pi. So we also should know um, when is it equal to uh, negative pi, right? That's actually going to give us some more solutions, and I almost missed that, so that's something you have to be very careful of. We could have gone clockwise or anti-clockwise to get to that point. So therefore then, uh, let's just deal with pi to begin with. Okay, so therefore 2 pi times cos x is equal to pi, so cos x is equal to pi over 2 pi, so that's going to be a half, or uh, and we do exactly the same again, 2 pi cos uh, x has to equal minus pi, so therefore cos x has to equal minus half. So if I just draw a quick new unit circle, so we want to know when is cos x equal to a half or minus half. So there is a half, and here is minus half, right? So if we just draw a little line down there and a line down here, what angle would give us a half? Well, if we use our inverse cos um, of half, okay, so if we take this and inverse cos of the left-hand side would give us x, which is the angle that we're looking for, and inverse cos of a half uh, would give us 60 degrees, right? So 60 degrees is pi over 3. So this angle is pi over 3 in here. Therefore, then, by symmetry, this one over here on the left can be found by, um, so if we went all the way around to pi and then back, uh, it would be like pi subtract 60. Uh, 3 pi over 3 minus pi over 3 giving us 2 pi over 3. Okay, so there's two more solutions. So pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. So pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. And those are the final solutions. And stop the clock. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to see more math tutorials. Check out my playlist on my channel or click one of the videos above. I'll see you next time.